Ladies and gentlemen, please listen very carefully. There is a tropical depression that is coming to Tampa on Thursday. Nothing is official and no one cares about my opinion, but school might be canceled. They're already in talks about it. With that being said, today in class, you picked up your assignment. If we have no school Thursday, your, assign your focus will still be due via submission by 8.30 Thursday morning, but you will have no test. It'll just disappear and we'll never talk about it again. If we have school on Thursday, you are taking a test on Thursday and your focus will be submitted in class. Friday, we have no school because of Veterans Day. Monday, we are working on week 14 assignments. You're doing a primary. Then I'm teaching Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, you are taking a test on week 14. Friday, we're doing a map. And then you're off for a week for Thanksgiving break. So make sure you are ready to go and you are paying attention to what I just told you. Um, and we will be good. So if we have no school on Thursday, the test just disappears. We're just going to move on with our lives and you'll do a digital submission for your focus. If we have school, you are taking a test, 25 questions, all multiple choice. That will be put onto Canvas, of course. Good? Good. Okay. Week 13 is your notes. We're going to start with business structures. Okay. Oh, friendly reminder, you do need to do the map. Everyone picked up a map today in class. You are doing the map entirely on your own. So the traditional business structure is single owner. That's your traditional. That has been in existence since the dawn of time. Single owner. The positive, and I'd write just a little plus sign, is that decisions are made quickly. The negative, it's high risk. If you start your own business and your business fails, you're out of money. So if you invested 500 bucks, you're out 500 bucks. If you invested 50, you're out 50. The positive is quick decisions. Okay. The second type of business organization is corporations. Corporations are chartered by the government. Parentheses, government approved. That is still the case today. If I start a business, I'm a small business owner. I'm not a corporation. Eventually, small businesses turn into corporations. That's how we get them. Addison. Government approved. So, you need to know corporations have stockholders. You need to know that term. And they own part of the company. What do you got? So if you are a corporation, in order to get stock owner, uh, stock owners, you have to go to the stock market. In order to enter the stock market, you have to be approved to enter the stock market, which means the government has to prove that you have the money you say you do, and that you are verifying these people who are spending money on it are actually getting something. Yes, pretty much every big company that you are going to say that's not a small mom and pop thing is going to be. No, if you're going to have enough money to be a private. Right now, Twitter is a, no, it's not. It is a traditional single business owner. Who owns? Elon Musk. Elon Musk owns it. He paid $44 billion for it. And he has lost already like $20 million in less than a week on his investors. It's a single owner. He owns everything. There are no more stock owners. He paid it all out. Everything, he owns it. Any decision that is done by Twitter, he owns it outright. He owns it outright. It is his company completely and utterly. Does he own all of Tesla? No. No. He owns, I think, 56% of Tesla. So he owns a majority stock, so he gets to make the decisions. But he doesn't get to universally do anything because he doesn't own over 80%. Does that make sense? So, it all really depends. Pretty much every company that you know is going to be a corporation, okay? You need to know stock holders are, stock owners are going to be owners of the company. 
And the positive is that there's limited liability. So if you buy $500 worth of Target stock and Target goes under, which is obviously not because I'm going there today after school, so it's going to be secured for quite some time because I'll be spending a lot of money there today. Um, if you own $500 of Target stock and Target goes under, how much money are you out? $500. Is it going to sink your entire family? No. However, is it going to hurt? Yes, of course. That's what a limited liability is, is that you're going to lose, but you're not going to lose everything. If you're a private industry, if you own your own business and your business goes under, will you go under? Yes. yes, of course. That's what makes it different. You do need to know that this will make it more accessible for the middle class to invest. So it's no longer just the wealthy, it is now accessible to everyone. And going into a recession like it looks like we are, the best thing we can do to stabilize our income is to do passive investing, which is buying things in stock, knowing that the stock market's going to crash, but when, not crash, it's not gonna crash, it's not gonna crash, it's not gonna crash. When the stock market begins to suffer, you buy low so you can sell later at a higher price. What do you got? Did you still lose everything Well, if you literally spend all of your money on stock and all the stock goes down, then yes. Monopolies are corporations who have dominated their industry. Monopolies are corporations that dominate their industry. Okay? They have eliminated competition. Facebook is a monopoly. They have been busted. That's what we call a monopoly that gets broken up. Facebook owns Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Meta, obviously, which is doing horribly right now, and a couple other fi uh, groups that they own. They were buying all the smaller companies and consolidating into one, and they were dominating tech. They've been broken up by the federal government. They're not allowed to own all these companies, so now we have more competition again. Um, and perfect example is Rockefeller and Standard Oil. Those are your perfect examples of monopolies. You need to know that monopolies are anti-laissez-faire. Monopolies are anti-laissez-faire, anti-capitalism. Capitalism is all about competition. Monopolies, there are no competition. So it's the opposite. Addison, they're anti-laissez-faire, um, anti-competition. Okay, your next heading. Oh, no, keep it under. Transnational companies is your next one. These are companies that are in multiple countries. Give me a transnational country in 2022. Thomas. Google. Google, fine. Harry Weather? Tick Sure. Can we get like a nicer one? Addison. Amazon is. Have you ever by accidentally ordered off the wrong Amazon? You've gone to like British Amazon and order something? Shit gets wild. Because it has to convert to pounds and you're like, oh God, what did I do? And then like you get too far and you're like, but I want it. And then you're like, ah. I have done it and unfortunately multiple times. Shit. Yeah, it's not two-day shipping from London, let me tell you. It is not. Um, but yeah, Amazon has, in most countries, its own Amazon. Because think about it. Bezos has figured out how to make it work in America, right? So by taking essentially the same template and putting it in another country, he can make more money. They're international corporation. Okay, I don't care about Hong Kong, Shanghai. I don't care about it, so I'm skipping it. It's not a great resource. You're not going to use it later. Uh, De Bears is going to be your first historical example. Hmm? No, it's under transnational. So these are your examples. For De Bears, you know, need to know that they control 93% of all diamond mines in the world. I think they control like 87% now. 93%. If you want to get Ren all distracted and all fucked up on rage, ask him about diamonds. Are you going to buy your wife any diamonds? 
and he'll just go off in this wild yeah. tangent. Yeah. No, because they're artificially inflated by the De Bears company. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She has a gorgeous sapphire. Exactly. They're awfully similar, if you ask me. Anyway, moving forward, De Bears. You need to know they control all the diamond mills. You need to know that they are run by Cecil Rhodes. That name's going to keep coming up, so you might as well learn it. He's British. So how do British people care about the indigenous? Oh, they don't. Yeah, you're right. He is going to be incredibly exploitative. What does it mean to be exploitative, Zoe? Yes, and abusive, and literally has no appreciation for life. So what does he do to a lot of his people? Kills them. Yeah, he kills them without really thinking about it. Like, oh, man, it's fine. Oh, it's Tuesday morning. I had a rough morning. So what is going to happen is with the De Bears company, he is also going to push for a Trans-Africa Railroad. That's his big thing going to fail, but that's one of his big things that will come up later. Okay, and then your next company that you need to be aware of is the Unilever company. You know this company. You've seen this logo before. It's like little bubble. Yeah, it's on food. It's on all this stuff. It's a British and Dutch company. This is why AP, excuse me, this is why AP loves it because it's the joint national venture to start with. Unilever, it is both British and Dutch. It originally starts with soap and then expands. It happens to be one of the world's largest companies today, but I don't need to know that. Okay, you own Unilever products because you own some of these. Fudgicles, huh? I do love fudgicles too. Hank's really in a popsicle face right now. Injury. He Injury. has popsicles every day. We sit on our front porch and eat a popsicle. And I'm sure our neighbors think we're absolute weirdos. But he can't eat popsicles inside because he makes a mess. And it's like disgusting. But he has to change his whole outfit after every popsicle. He's two and a half. He should be better. All right. Impact on culture. Impact on culture. So it used to be Unilever, used to be soap, and it has expanded. Okay, consumerism, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, consumerism is when people spend most of their income buying things. Ladies and gentlemen, are we consumers? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Okay. Huh? Wow, you have really embodied consumerism. <laughs> Previously to the Industrial Revolution, you would walk in a store for like a, like a dress shop, okay? And you would walk in, and there would be a dress that they're making on in the window so you can see their work. But then you'd be like, oh, you want a dress? Look at the book. The book. And you would pick a page and say, I want that dress. And then they would sit there. Because every dress takes hundreds of hours to make. They can't just have one hanging on the rack that you would pick up because it takes hundreds of hours to make. So they're only going to make it when you... Pay for it. That's how you used to order things before the industrial age. Now with industrialization, we have machines to do the heavy lifting. So the machines are spending hours making all this stuff. So now you walk into shops and what do you look? Yeah, you look for your size. The idea of picking something off the rack is an industrial idea. Because it cost too much before to make a dress that no one was going to buy or buy right away because you've invested all these hours into it. This is how everything changes. So the idea of going shopping is an industrial idea. Okay. Also, you need to acknowledge that the middle class has money in their pockets for the first time. So if you have money in your pockets, just like your girl Lauren, she's going to spend it. Next is advertising. Okay. No one was advertising before the industrial age because no one had 
Money. Money wasn't really a thing. You'd barter stuff back and forth. You would trade things. You would sell things minorly to the people in your town. But it's not a mass production kind of thing. Advertisements are going to start because now there's competition. Leisure activities. People want to forget what they do every day at work. So people are buying bikes so they can be outside and enjoy the sun. People are trying to avoid the reality. So they're doing things like sports. People have money in their pocket and they're happy to spend it on entertainment. They used to go and see shows. Okay, but the biggest thing, ladies and gentlemen, is event space. Write it down in cities. Event space is going to be the biggest impact on culture. For the first time, cities are trying to, cities are trying to build places for things for people to do. Why? Why is there now venues for people to do things on weekends? Why, Lauren? Because they have money and it's an opportunity to make money. And if people don't do anything, do they sit around and do nothing or do they get in trouble? Again, trouble and causes an increase of crime. So if there's lots of things to do, people aren't going to get themselves in trouble. Okay, reactions to industrial age. Reactions. The first thing we're going to talk about is labor unions. How is it only third period? Exhaustion. Okay. Labor unions, you need to put a big star. Labor unions fundamentally change societies and the lives of the workers for the better. The lives of the workers and society for the better. Okay. They accomplish 40 hour work weeks, minimum wage. They accomplish 40 hour work weeks, minimum wage, overtime pay, and five day work week. Is that a big deal or a little deal? Big deal. Big deal. Ladies and gentlemen, are we benefiting from this? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. Now, let me explain. You don't need to write this down, just listen. How a labor union works. So say I'm the factory owner and you are my factory workers, okay? Sophie comes up to me and says, Bennett, these working conditions suck. It's too hot. And I'm like, so? And she's like, well, fix it. And I'm like, no, because that would cost me money. <coughs> Hell no, Sophie. And she's like, fine, I quit. And I'm like, see ya. Bye. And she leaves. Is Sophie quitting going to hurt me? No. no, because I have all of you. Absolutely not. So, Sophie knows that it, okay, so pretend that conversation never happened. So, Sophie knows that if she quits, nothing is going to change. So, she starts talking to people around her and be like, hey, let's form a union. So, she starts talking to Marin and Reagan and Kaden, and all of a sudden, Everyone in Andrews Row all the way over to William are now in Sophie's union. So Sophie and all of you show up to my office and Sophie speaks on behalf of the union. Bennett, if you don't lower the temperature in this factory, we are all going to quit. What do I have to say? Okay. Yeah, I have to say okay, because will my factory suffer? Yes. If all of you quit, mm -hmm. will I be able to turn a profit? Mm -hmm. Will I see a huge impact to my bottom line? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what do I have to do? I have to say yes. So who won? We Sophie. <laughs> so that's how a labor union works. Who hates labor unions more than anyone? Okay. Well, not specifically. Okay. But uh, factory owners hate them because it essentially like forces them into doing things they don't want to do. Okay. You need to write down labor unions start in one factory, then multiple factories, then begin impacting governments. 
So they start local factory and then they expand to other factories in the area. And then all of a sudden they're big enough that they can start impacting the government. These are how these transitions occur. Put another star. Labor union is why Karl Marx prediction of the fall of capitalism failed. So the reason why our lives are significantly better than they were during the Industrial Revolution is entirely because of labor unions. Entirely because of it. Now, labor unions have gone in and out of fashion. Um, they were very popular in the 1800s. They became less popular in the 1900s, and now we're in 2020. In the 2020s, they became very much in fashion again. Right now, they're trying to unionize Starbucks. They are trying to unionize Amazon. Yeah, Delta, Delta Airlines too. Delta is trying to unionize as well. So because all of these people are getting pushed, like the Amazon people are like peeing in bottles on their shift, for God's sake. Okay, they have crazy deadlines that they just can't keep up. But if anyone hears the word union, what do they do? They fire a bunch of people and all that stuff. There's only one Starbucks in the whole country that has a union in it. Um, there's only one Amazon uh, distribution center that has a union at this point. Uh, it's because it costs companies lots and lots of money if they organize. Uh, so it's one of those things that Bezos is really anti-union. The guy who runs Starbucks is anti-union because it costs them a ton of money. So um, it's a huge deal. In 2022, it's uh, growing in popularity for sure. Voting rights. Okay. Will be expanded... Because labor unions show the power of the masses. Okay, so you need to know, traditionally, who are the only people voting? White, rich men. Yeah, it's not just men, it is white, rich men. So only if you own property. So it'll be expanded to all white men. Isn't that nice? So all white men, you don't need to be wealthy, you just need to be white, and men. The next expansion, it will be all men. That means black, Hispanic, uh, Chinese, except in America, uh, for a very long time, okay? Then eventually, with a long delay, you can write that down, a long delay, women will get the right to vote. Okay, so that's the evolution of voting. I don't need you to know the dates because every country is different. How long? Uh, probably like 60, 70 years. What? Because we're inferior to the men in the room, of course. Olivia. They used to really, no, we weren't allowed to get educated. They used to think that a woman's vote was a husband voting twice. That we would do exactly what our husband tells us to do, so why does a man need two votes? Why does a married husband get a married man get two votes while a single man only gets one vote? That is literally why we didn't get the vote, or one of the biggest reasons. The other one was because we were too dumb to have a mind for politics. Um, well, that we were uneducated. Why were we uneducated? Because they, they didn't educate us and they refused to educate us. So that one is always a good one. I, I, I enjoy that one the most. Um, all of those kind of components and the fact that they thought women were too morally superior to men to be too dirty by politics, which is such a bullshit reason. Anyway, we don't get the vote until the 1920s, post-World War II here in the United States. Um, and then how are voting rights looking here in 2022? Yeah, we have been declassified as a eminent power and democracy, we're now a tear down. And no. Uh, there's lots of complication to it, and that's not my content today. Here we go, child labor. By the way, today is the midterms. You need to get your parents out there and vote in. You need to be texting them and asking, have you voted? What's your voting plan? Everyone needs to vote in this election. I don't care what you're voting for, but everyone needs to vote, because democracy only works if everyone votes. Child labor, here we go. Child labor is going to start being banned in the 1840s. It's pretty much banned in the 1880s because of free public education. 
So anyone under uh, up until eighth grade has to go to school. And after eighth grade, you can leave. Because you've reached your mature peak in eighth grade. Can we agree? Like you learn all the things you needed to clearly in eighth grade. Okay. Huh? They went all the way through. I mean, you can get a college degree depending on where you're doing. What? Eighth grade, you were mandated to have. So that went to eighth grade for a while, and then you would go to secondary, and then you would go to college. Okay, intellectual, here we go. Okay, John Stuart Mill created utilitarianism, which is right here. Okay, it is the belief that we all serve a purpose. And that people shouldn't be treated equally, but they should be treated fairly. Okay, and he was anti-capitalism, anti-industrialization. Okay, he's pretty influential. He's a huge reason why we have free public education. Horace Mann's the guy who gets it done, but uh, John Stuart Mill is a huge influence on it. Then you have Karl Marx. His book is the Communist Manifesto, of course. If you didn't know that, the moment I said Karl Marx, I hate you. Addison. Anti-capitalism, anti-industrialization. No, he believed people should be treated fairly, not equally. Like, women don't deserve to be treated like a man. Obviously. Anyway, all right, Karl Marx. You need to know you wrote the Communist Manifesto. You're going to put a big star, and you're going to write, look on the back of your map, because I'm not going through the whole thing again. Can we agree? I've already taught it to you. Hello? Yeah, write on, look on the back of your map, because I'm not going to go through. He's the guy behind the evolution of economies, okay? So don't write this down, because you already wrote it down. However, let me quickly remind you. He's the guy. Karl Marx believed communi uh, capitalism will fail because the people will overthrow it, and create a socialist society, yes? The socialist society will last for 200, 500 years and eventually turn into communism. You need to put another star. It fails because of government reforms, right, Lauren? How much time do I have? Uh, I hauled it through this, this is good. Oh, that's why I, my shoes hurt. It's because my laces are shoved in there. Oh, it feels so much better. Things are turning around. Here we go. Here we go. You are doing Ottoman Empire. Center it. Okay, you can tell me how did the Ottomans originally respond to industrialization? Alex. They didn't like it and they thought it was just a fad. Yeah, they weren't really into it. So when everyone starts industrializing, they're like, cool, we'll be over here doing this. So, they're not really into it, okay? However, that is going to change under Sultan Muhammad II. What's up? So, are they like all the time? Yeah, they're super behind. Well, they're really far behind because, like, the Ottoman are, like, 400 years old at this point. So, they're really old. But they're, like, super far behind because they know they can get a quick jump on industrialization. So, under Sultan Muhammad II, they are going to attempt to industrialize. What do you got, Olivia? Oh, they go from 1453 to 1918. They collapse after World War I. Okay, so, and they're going to cause a huge problem. Have you ever wondered why the Middle East is a hot mess here in 2022? It is a hot mess. Like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, all those places, are those hot destinations on your travel list? Mm -hmm. No, as an American, you're not welcome in most. With that being said, the reason why it's a hot mess is because when the Ottoman Empire collapsed, guess who filled the void? Your wonderful <laughs> European countries and the United States. And when we got there, did we show respect for the local culture, religions, and belief structures? Mm -hmm. Or did we show up trying to take as much money and resources as possible? Yes. So, 
The borders of the Middle East today in 2022 were drawn by a bunch of white people who had no care for the culture, ideology, or belief systems of the people in those countries. So all those little maps with all these people hating each other were all drawn by a bunch of white people. Now here we are in 2022, all of these countries all hate each other, and they all hate because of the terrible things that we have continued to do to them and the resources we have stolen and the fact that we have emboldened people to bomb the hell out of it. Bomb the hell out of it. That would be in World War II where we purposely bombed it so we could take it over. What was there? What is in the Middle East that gets discovered right before World War I? Oil. What has only grown in value and importance? Oil. And if you steal oil, is it cheaper or more expensive? Cheaper. Oh my God, guys. Would Europe and America purposely steal oil in order to not pay? No. Yes. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. And that's what we do. And that's all caused because of the Ottoman Empire collapse. But that's another week's content. That's not today. Okay. You need to know, under Sultan Mahad II, he's going to attempt to industrialize. He's going to try to modernize the Ottoman Empire. <coughs> what? Uh, no. But he tries, and that's nice. Uh, you need to know that he abolishes Janissaries. Yeah, here we are with that term. Kaden, what's a Janissary? Oh, Kaden, what is it, Colin? Yeah, but there's a foreign distinction on these. Jade. Yeah, they're Christians. You gotta know Christians. Your definition was really beautiful, Colin, but you gotta include Christian because the reason why they were immediately pulled into this is because they wanted them all to die. It's better to kill Christians than it is to kill Muslims because the Ottoman Empire are Muslim. So they put them in the front, but they ended up doing amazing and rose in uh, preference and respect and now they're like a big deal. Okay, Janissaries are finally removed. They've been in place for 400 years. Do you think it's time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, they're also going to remove feudalism. By the way, this is in 1823. Does it sound like time? Yes. Okay, now, post Mahad II, write it, that's your next heading. We start the Tanzimat reforms. Now, have you noticed in the writing week, there are some answers that keep coming up that you can keep reusing? Yes? Tanzimat <laughs> reforms is one of those answers. Okay, the Tanzimat reforms are post Mahad II. They are all about stopping corruption, secularizing education, and changing laws. They are all about stopping corruption, secularizing education, and changing the laws. It is championed by this guy. Okay? I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to try. Okay? He's the guy leading it. Okay? Now. You do need to know that he makes all men equal, which is a big deal. He makes all men equal, which is a huge deal. And he does change the law code. Okay, however, you need to put a star. The Tantamite reforms hurt women. Women get less rights, if you can possibly imagine. Yeah, he does. Women get less rights out of it, though. And it will trigger the Young Turks, which are a huge deal, which we'll be talking about in two weeks. Triggers the Young Turks. Have a good day. See ya. Please leave. Do you want to be stressed out with um, prompts for AP Gov or no?